Hi everyone, Sean Zinsmeister here from ThoughtSpot. Wanted to give you a brief introduction to ThoughtSpot for working capital analytics for accounts receivable. This is a pretty prevalent use case right now as companies and, and their stakeholders recognize the vast disparity in their financial cushions as we enter times of economic volatility. Change can come quickly, and in order to cope quickly, companies need to manage working capital very closely to extend liabilities, shorten current asset lives, and optimize inventory levels. So in this demo, we are identifying opportunities to more efficiently manage working capital, starting by reducing accounts receivable. So I am going to be playing the role of a credit director who needs to understand our current economics receivable and assess where our biggest problem is, which invoices are most overdue, and which customers have become most delinquent. So let's start by looking at one of our pin boards that's readily available right from our homepage. So I can click on accounts receivable analysis. Now this is an example of a pin board full of up-to-date insights and trends around accounts receivable. So we like to refer to pin boards as living dashboards. They're completely interactive so I can drill down to the granular level. So in this case, you know, say I want to look at in 2019 average days to pay, maybe I want to look at recent code and I can get there very, very quickly. And of course, I can go back to my original visualization in just a click. We can also use Answer Explorer. If I hover over any visualization, you'll see that this Explore tab comes up. And our AI engine is actually then surfacing different types of suggestions from other people who have actually looked at this data, and as well as my own usage around these are different filters I could use, different breakdowns, different metrics. So if I wanted to look at this by invoice, I click there, maybe I want to change a metric, and I can do all this very easily on the fly with just a few clicks. And of course, I can always refresh to go back to my original visualization. It teaches me more about how I might want to explore this data to learn a little bit more about the insights available to me. But everything here was created with the power of search and AI. So let's start with our first search. Let's go over here to search, and I want to compare our average accounts receivable days or days to pay to days late across fiscal years to get a better understanding of our current accounts receivable situation. So to start, let's actually just type in days to pay, days late, and we want to look at this by fiscal year. Here we can see that over the past three years, there's been steady progress and our AR is trending downwards. Now, days late is where we have leverage to further reduce our accounts receivable. So let's dig a little deeper into the reason codes behind our days late for 2019. So we're going to look at this, just drill by reason code. And we're looking here now at all document types. So let's focus only on invoices. So I can come up here and just look at invoice. And looking at this by overdue days is only half the equation, though. So we need to assess where the most money is locked up. So I can easily add total balance going up here, typing in balance. And you can see that it automatically has chosen a scatter plot as the best view for this answer. We can see from this visualization that resolve for buyer was one of the top reasons behind overdue invoices last year, with over half the days late and the most money tied up. Disputes aside, though, it also appears that the next highest reason was our own pricing errors. Now, this one is on us. So our own internal processing issues are causing problems to our AR. So let's see which customers, in this case, are affected by these pricing errors. So we're going to go ahead and just drill down here by customer name. Switch to a table view. Now, for each of these customers, I want to see who the credit manager was. So it's going to go ahead and add to this query by adding credit manager. And even go down to the most transactional level of detail and look at all the individual document numbers. So I'm going to look at accounting document number. And to get a better view, we're going to go ahead and sort by USD, amount in USD descending. So here you can see that we have an almost $700,000 invoice that was 
23 days late on payment. Now I have a list of all affected customers with corresponding credit reps that I can reach out to. So very granular insights that lead to action very, very quickly. Search helps me get to insights quickly when I know what I'm looking for. When I'm not sure the questions to ask, this is where AI can be very handy to help analysts automate the discovery process. Spot IQ is what we call our AI engine, and there are a number of useful utilities built on top of it to help uplevel the analyst. So perhaps we have recently updated our accounts receivable data. After all, customers are paying us every day and we issue new invoices just as frequently. But we don't have time to query all that data because it's constantly growing and changing every day. And it'd be impossible for us to ask all the questions that we would want of our data. So we can actually use AI here uh, to perform and automate the drill path and do thousands of drills for us in a matter of seconds. So let's start by clearing the search bar. We're gonna enter a few areas of interest to start. So let's just look at, let's see, customer name and just average days to pay. And then we're gonna run an auto analysis to look for anomalies and outliers automatically. Again, it's gonna automate the drill process. So we can actually select the columns. In this case, I'll just choose all of them. And go over here to the Spot IQ tab. And we can see what we found. So you can see that in a matter of seconds, Spot IQ has actually discovered you know, about 26 insights by analyzing about 29.1 million rows data in about 20 seconds. You can also see that we performed about 42,940 drills. So imagine asking a question and then drilling down 42,000. 940 times. Uh, no human has the ability to do that. So it's almost using AI as a brute force engine to surface outliers from very, very large uh, piles of data that's always growing. This is a great productivity tool, especially for analysts to get to those insights, to find those proverbial needles in the haystack, as it were. So here we can see how we were able to quickly discover outliers, trends, and correlations related to customers that take an exceptionally shorter or longer time to pay their invoices. As you can see here, um, a couple examples of the different insights that we found, and there's a natural language description that the AI has provided us below. And you can see there's a number of other different insights and visualizations that were automatically created for me on the fly. So I can go through a lot of this. Let's go scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can also see that average days late for this specific customer is on a nice downward trend. So we may want to pin this to our pin board to investigate what actions we've taken with this customer to help bring the metric down. So I'm going to go ahead and just pin this. We'll put this in our accounts receivable analysis. And of course, you can get all these insights on the spot with Thoughts About Mobile for iOS and coming soon for Android this month. So you can see here's all the pin boards that we have available, including the insight that we just pinned from Spot IQ in our previous analysis. Hope you enjoyed that overview of working capital analytics for accounts receivable. If you have any questions, please visit thoughtspot.com or feel free to find me on Twitter, at S. Zinsmeister. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Sean Zinsmeister, and happy to answer any questions and put you in contact with the right person uh, around this use case. Thanks so much.